Hey, it's all with a little preview of what's to come in patch 10.2.7. If you enjoy this sort of stuff, hit that like button, subscribe for more WoW coverage, and catch me live on Twitch. Let's start with the Heritage Armor sets. Troll and Draenei Heritage Armor quest lines are likely to be encrypted before launch like the previous ones were, but here's a look at the male and female versions of each. A few details I want to point out, there are two color tones that I was able to find. For the trolls, there's a natural color and one that is distinctly horde themed. There's also a cool back transmog shown on one of the female models. The Draenei outfit threw me off for a second before realizing we just never saw this outside of early concept art. It's not quite the same though, as usual I like the concept art better, but I can't say this design didn't come from nowhere. I also want to note that the sash that protrudes under the belt is in fact part of the belt and not the pants, so it's not going to feel too awkward if you wanted to mix and match. Also notice that there's a face cover and a non-face cover version of the helmet. The Pandaria Remix is a limited time event which I'm going to guess will continue until the War Within pre-patch, so at least 8 weeks long. Long story short, it's going to be fast leveling through the expansion with overpowered buffs to help you out and lots of cosmetics to pick up along the way. It's a separate experience, but characters you can make and progression will be taken over to live servers once the event is finished. The same goes for any cosmetics earned. Not all the questions have been answered, but data mining is ongoing and the event is going to have a short test period on the PTR this coming weekend. The gist of this event is again to run in and romp through the leveling and questing as if you're making a new character. You're going to play through outdoor content and dungeons, even raids, while leveling using crazy powers. And for things that you don't want, you can trade them in for currency towards things that you do want, namely cosmetics. In the meantime, we have learned that the cosmetics include recolors of many mounts, weapon, and armor appearances introduced in that expansion. There's also some new stuff, including a chicken nest sort of back transmog, and the class set appearances from the trading post. They have new versions available through this game mode. Even the visual effects from the old legendary cloaks will be obtainable. The Pandaria Remix event is arguably the highlight of this patch, but it's still called Dark Heart, which includes questing that'll start leading us into the new expansion. These quests are also encrypted, and some rewards might be too, uh, but this fish mount is not. It's clearly a reference to Nazoth's old god fish form. Another interesting set of additions include Alliance Wolves and Horde Nightsabers. Yeah, I didn't get that backwards. This sort of references to the Time Rift mounts, where Horde and Alliance members gave mounts to one another. These come in multiple colors, and at least one will be available in the trading post, meaning most likely we purchase one and it'll just change depending on our chosen faction. I'm not sure if other colors are part of the Remix event or are being saved for later, but hey, they do look pretty cool. Most of what we're seeing in this first build, again, first build, include items not particularly tied to story progression. In other words, it's a lot of trading post items. Expected in the summer is some beachwear for your preference. I'm a fan of the Murloc belt, but I especially dig the hat and sunglasses combo which I'll definitely sport while saving the world from annihilation. We have this cool Pride Month themed beach chair and umbrella to hang out under. There's also a, um, a surfboard, and if this thing can dragon ride, I hope this ends up being really cool to fly around in. A Murloc onesie and backpack will also be available at some point, coming in two different colors. There are six new hair colors for Kul Tiran, and I'm glad that they didn't try to oversell this like they did with the Blood Elf hair colors a while back. Hunter Pet Stable UI got a big touch up, and it's looking super clean. Truth be told, I barely play my hunter, so I'm going to kind of speak from non-experience. The sidebar easily organizes your pets by type, and you can use the filter and search bar to you know, filter what you want to see. The preview page is much cooler looking and easy to use at a glance. Drag pets that you want to use into the active list and reorder it as you like. Also, on the far right slot there, Beastmaster Hunters, who use the Animal Companion talent, can specify which pet they want to show by dragging one into the far right slot. There's a new filter for the pre-made group tool that lets you refine your search based on the dungeon that you want to get into. If they're looking for a certain role, if your class is already in the group, or if tanks or heals are in there already, basically there are lots of choices to give you the best results. Notice how the filled spots are color coordinated too, so when browsing you can get more information at a glance. For now that's going to be it, I wanted to keep this short and sweet. Later this week I'll try to cook up an overview of what the Pandaria Remix is going to feel like, so be sure to subscribe to the channel. Like the video too, and catch me live on Twitch. Thanks for coming, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy.